Welcome to Biosumit friends. Today we'll learn about altruism and reciprocal altruism. Now what is altruism? An organism is said to behave altruistically when its behavior benefits other organisms at a cost to itself. Okay. Now this altruistic behavior is very common throughout the animal kingdom, particularly in species with complex social structures. For example, vampire rats regularly regurgitate blood and donate it to the other members of their group who have failed to feed that night. Okay, so that it can ensure that they don't starve or for simplicity you can say that there can be two types of organism altruistic and selfish and let's say someone is drowning okay an altruist would jump in and try to save him or her okay whereas the selfish would not so this is the idea of altruism but what about the natural selection theory of Darwin okay the Darwin's viewpoint of natural selection leads us to expect animals to behave in ways that increase their own chances of survival and reproduction okay not those of others right but by behaving altruistically an animal actually reduces its own fitness so what about the natural selection theory actually it's not getting violated we will talk about in next slides but before that let's have that concept that is inclusive fitness okay in the next slide we will talk about the inclusive fitness and, and uh, with the help of inclusive fitness we can tell that the natural selection theory is not getting violated okay and obviously with that hamilton's rule wd hamilton now what is inclusive fitness uh, this is a concept in evolutionary biology developed by professor the wd hamilton okay so how can altruistic behavior be maintained by evolution okay if it doesn't enhance the survival and reproductive success of the self-sacrificing individuals right like the natural selection theory an altruist is risking his life or her life but what about his reproductive and survival success okay now wd hamilton comes up with this concept and explain us through this theory okay this theory of inclusive fitness now you can see this second point that it is a measure of an organism success is passing on its gene to the next generation taking into account not only its own reproductive success but also the effects it has on the reproductive success of its close relatives it means it doesn't mean only that uh, just pass the pass your genes to the next generation by yourself only okay but by helping those close relatives who can uh, pass the genes to the next generation too and in that way the genes can be secured in the next generation and you can call it as a natural selection or the or its survival okay or reproductive success right so in this one uh, through uh, by this point we can see that yeah it's not i mean the altruism is not violating the natural selection theory okay remember so wd hamilton says we must take into consideration the effect the trait has on the fitness of other individuals as well as the actor who performs the behavior right so that's why inclusive fitness is made up of two components okay so you can see here that you can pass the genes to the next generation by your own or helping to your helping the close relatives to uh, of yours and it can uh, benefit yourself by this reproductive uh, having the reproductive success right so one is direct fitness by producing its own offspring and another is indirect fitness by providing help to other relatives who share many of those genes to produce offspring okay now the next point is hamilton's rule okay now what is hamilton's rule hamilton actually wd hamilton introduced the idea in a series of papers in the 1960s okay and this is called as hamilton's rule uh, it has a mathematical uh, equation you can say uh, expression uh, uh, by rb greater than c by this uh, he explains that an altruistic gene will be favored by natural selection okay but when the when uh, there are some certain conditions so that can be expressed by this mathematical expression that is rb greater than c okay rb is greater than c r is the coefficient of relatedness between the donor and the recipient or you can say the actor and the recipient okay and what is v b is the benefit received by the recipient okay the altruist is giving some benefit to the recipient so b is the benefit okay b is the benefit received by the recipient and c is the cost incurred by the altruist okay so when the r r 
and uh, the product of R and B will be greater than of C. Uh, at that time, we can say that the altruistic gene can be favored by natural selection. Okay. But otherwise, uh, what will be that uh, if someone is uh, risking his life and getting no benefit, then it, have, it would have been invalid, right, with the time. Now, this cost of benefits are measured in terms of reproductive fitness. Okay. The cost is how many fewer offspring the altruist produced and the benefit is the average number of extra offspring that the beneficiary of an altruist act produces. Okay. Now, the R, the coefficient of relatedness, is actually the proportion of genes shared by two individuals because of their common ancestry. Okay. Like, uh, uh, your mother and you are related by half. Okay. I mean, the relate coefficient of relatedness will be half. You are possessing the half of the genes uh, shared by from your mother or from your father. Okay. Similarly, from your grandmother, that will be half cross half. That is one fourth. Okay. Now, so the coefficient of relatedness is actually the proportion of genes shared by the two individuals. Okay. So now, parent offspring relationship. So you know that every parent transmits its 50 percent of its genetic information to each offspring okay so on the average siblings therefore share half of the uh, each parent's contribution to their genome right so adding to it coefficient of relatedness is 0.5 parent offspring and full sibling is 0.5 similarly you can calculate the half sibling is 0.25 okay now the cousins will share 0.125 right and grandparent grandchild will be the half of the 0.5 okay like uh, let me have a black screen here suppose your grandfather okay now gf is grandfather here obviously to your father so grandfather and your father is related by half, right? The coefficient of relatedness, coefficient of relatedness is half. And to your father and you, it's also half, right? 0.5. So your grandfather and you, so what will be the coefficient of relatedness? It's half into half means 1 by 4. Right, that means 0.25. Okay, so this is the idea coefficient of relatedness. Um, yeah, similarly for nth level of ancestor, okay, uh, for nth level of ancestor, what will be the coefficient of relatedness? 1 by 2 to the power n. Similarly, here is 1 by 2 to the power 2, 2 or 2 square, that means 1 by 4. Right. So this, in this way, we can calculate the coefficient of relatedness. Okay. So now coming to the another part, that is reciprocal altruism. So this concept was popularized by Robert Trivers. Okay. In his 1971 paper, uh, it, it it entitled I think uh, the evolution of reciprocal altruism. Okay. Now this is actually uh, altruism among unrelated organisms, including members of different species. Okay, so the, what is the key idea? The key idea behind reciprocal altruism is that individuals engage in cooperative behaviors because it ultimately enhances their own fitness or reproductive success, right? Like the altruism. But uh, the word reciprocal altruism, obviously, you can understand that obviously in future it will demand some help to the uh, from that very uh, recipient, right? So this is the idea of reciprocal altruism. So as you can see here, it involves a kind of tick for tack strategy. Okay, like you uh, once you have helped to someone, and then they that someone uh, should have the duty to help you to help you in future. Okay, in return they expect to be helped when needed. Help to be helped like this. Okay. Now this evolutionary mechanism is most likely to work for the animals living in the small groups. Uh, you can understand that why. Now there are some key features of reciprocal altruism. For example, repeated interaction. Okay. The reciprocal altruism is most likely to evolve in situations where individuals interact with others repeatedly. 
okay so what happens is this create opportunities for uh, reciprocation okay and it ensures the costs and benefits of the altruistic access fed over multiple interactions okay so it should be a repeated interaction okay another will be the memory and recognition okay suppose the individuals are engaged in the reciprocal altruism uh, phenomena now they need to be able to remember the first interactions okay and recognize the individuals uh, to whom they have provided assistance okay or uh, from from who they have received uh, the assistance or help or benefit okay this helps in determining whether the future cooperation is warranted okay now in past you have you are thinking that you have helped someone or you have you are get you have get, uh, got the help from that person or for that group so it's your duty to help them in future okay now that's what that's how the memory or recognition part works now the costly signals now to demonstrate a commitment to cooperation uh, individuals may engage in costly signal okay such as providing assistance even when it involves some cost to themselves okay this can act as a uh, signal of trustworthiness okay and obviously it will increase the likelihood of receiving help in return and benefits outweigh cost obviously that is the main idea of altruism that's why it's not getting uh, it's not violating the natural selection theory otherwise it it will be invalid theory uh, in terms of evolution or yeah evolution in biology but to conclude it uh, obviously this rule explains the evolution of behaviors to be altruistic okay like helping close relatives raise offsprings okay as i have said earlier that you can pass the genes by you by yourself through the next generation or you can help to your closer relatives so that they can pass the same genes or the similar type of genes because the proportion of these sometimes shared by two individuals and we know now that we can call it as a coefficient of relatedness or the smaller okay and in the context of hamilton's inclusive fitness okay what I have just uh, said, okay, the individuals can enhance their reproductive success by helping close relatives, okay. Now, the third point is, uh, the, this has been particularly influential in understanding the social behaviors in organisms. For example, natural selection obviously it uh, leads us to believe that to be selfish, right, but the animal kingdom, throughout the animal kingdom, you will see some many social uh, activities now this altruism altogether is actually driving the social behaviors in organisms okay such as cooperating breedings in birds and mammals okay now many social animals you will see that like ants bees wasps okay uh, in those uh, uh, animals or in those group group of animals you will see some two i mean you means two and you so some is two social activities in those uh, in them okay like uh, I think in um, bees, okay, the workers don't produce offspring, right? But help their sexual sisters, okay, and brothers to offspring, uh, I mean, to produce offspring. So, uh, in nature, in environment, you will see so many examples of uh, social, uh, I mean, you can say that uh, social altruism, okay, helping to others, sometimes to cost of this, uh, at a cost to itself, right? That is the sole idea of. Uh, altruism and obviously uh, it's a great man wd hamilton uh, he had gave us the theory he had given us the theory of inclusive fitness it's hamilton's rule and kin selection that is advocated than c okay and obviously the this has a had a significant impact on the study of social evolution and cooperation in biology otherwise we can say that uh, animals uh, should be selfish and they should not help others but with helping others it actually increases its own fitness and the reproductive success so with hamilton's work we can uh, know and we can present it mathematically uh, this fact okay so this is the idea of altruism and reciprocal altruism hope you have understood the concept of reciprocal altruism, altruism and the main altruism and the treatment the hamilton's work okay thank you